Lovely. Lovely. Cheers. Bye. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. I've got an unconscious gentleman. He has severe traumatic brain injury. King's College Hospital, London. I think something hurt. One of the busiest A&E departments in the country. They'll be busy right now. Yeah, you know, 15 minutes, 30 yeah. minutes. King's is extreme, isn't it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> A place where love, life and death... <laughs> unfold every single day. Fall from a tree is probably absolutely trolleyed. I'm very drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep thinking I'm not going to cope. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department <gasps> in just one 24-hour period. Kavina. Everyone should walk through an emergency room at least once in their life because it makes you realise what your priorities are. It's not the rush, rush, rush and the money, money, money. It's the people you love and the fact that one minute they might be there and one minute they might be gone. Facebook. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to check in at King's Hospital. Nearly three million people come to A&E each year after accidents in the home. All right, now what we need to do is just take both some above your head. The most common body part to be injured is the finger or thumb. Singe, I will be able to use my finger, won't I? I'm sure. Do you know... Did I, did I, I did tell you what happened to Odette, didn't I? What? She blended her finger away. Did I not tell you no, that? No, I think you did, yeah. and I think I had that same Baby reaction. brain. So she was cleaning around the inside. Baby brain? Yeah, because she just had two children, baby oh, brain. Right, okay. It's like a real phenomenon. Yeah, you haven't got enough brain cells just to fuck off and deplete once you have birth. Really? Once you give birth. There was a bit of food left on the inside of the blender, so she just cleaned away her finger and, and it was still on and she switched it on. So if she can get over that... Yeah. Uh, yeah, not bad. They say I've basically damaged my spleen, so I'm in my spleen at the moment. Hello, Kim. Uh, stroke team to resource. 20 minutes, please. Nine-year-old Peggy is unconscious after a suspected stroke. King's is a specialist stroke center, treating on average three stroke patients every day. A stroke means a blood vessel supplying a part of the brain gets blocked. As a result, that part of the brain loses its function. Okay, so Matthew, what's, what's, what's the chest like? Uh, it's got some crackers on the right base, but yeah. otherwise you've got bilateral okay. entry. It can cause a severe disability, and if it affects a big blood vessel, it can also kill. Three. Pupils are two millimetres not reacting. Not making even the slightest response to pain. Suction, please, wherever Tim's put it. That's it, lovely. Thank you. Hello, Tim. How's she going? Yeah, lady had all the symptoms of a, a stroke earlier on, but fitted in the ambulance uh, 
Not meant anywhere on arrival, put a Goodell in, breathing rather slowly, around six to eight per minute. Not particularly adequate breathing either. Um, yeah, pupils are fixed but very small. Yep. She hadn't been very well for a long time. We've had various troubles and uh, and so it was not really unexpected. Of course, it's probably about the third time she'd been into hospital. What we're going to have to do, which is probably going to have to be achieved for scan, because she's not really reacting at all. One of the worst things, though, she, when she said to me, I'm dying, she knew that she was going. So are you Peggy's husband? Yes. My name is Malcolm. I'm one of the A and E doctors. Shut up. This is uh, Leanne, is our sister here. Um, my colleague, my consultant, is just oh, with. I'm not, I, I'm not very good. Okay. <laughs> my consultant is just with your wife at the moment. Yes. And we just wanted to come and find out a little bit more about what had happened to her this morning. Is that okay? Yes. Well, so what happened this morning? Well, this morning, you see, we we got a routine. I get up about nine o'clock, I go in to wake her up, then I go down and do the breakfast. Mm -hmm. But I go in this morning and she's slumped yes. over the side of the bed. Couldn't do anything with it, so I phoned the doctor, the doctor said, phoned the ambulance, and that was it. Okay. Was she responsive to you? Was she talking to no, you this well, morning? Inaudible. Right. She's mumbling, I don't want to go, I just I fear he's coming back in the hospital. Okay. I don't want to go, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Obviously, your wife is quite unwell at the moment. Yes. OK. We're, she's not really responding to us. No. What we want to do is take her to the CT scan and do a scan of her head. Yes. OK. Mm -hmm. We want to see whether or not anything has happened inside yes. to make her so drowsy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. She is very unwell, and I don't want to give you a false impression. I hope you don't mind, sir. No, no, but, no. no. We, we, we realise that. We, we, we're both of us a will past our cell by date. There's no doubt about that. We, it's got to come sometime. OK. Mm. Well, we're going to do a scan of the head, OK? And we'll see, what, see what's going on, OK? And obviously, we'll get you through to see her as soon as we can, sir. Yeah. OK? Yeah, thank you. Working in an emergency department changes your views on life and death. You can realise how fragile things are. We know that not everybody can be saved or can be, can be helped. And we give it a good go, but you, you, we can't always, always help everybody. Jonathan Goodall. Ooh. Oh, no, we just Doing a good kangaroo impression yeah. there. <laughs> I feel like everyone else is being seen before us. Well, in a way, that's probably a good thing in that it proves that yours isn't, probably isn't that you know, serious. Sally has sliced her finger opening a jar. Her husband is away for work, so she's called on ex-boyfriend Ben for support. See you again. No, you're not. What? You're not even thinking about it. Why did I? Oh, my. Did I not tell you? I said... Have you had sex? You sound in a good mood. And you said no. You <laughs> dirty little bugger. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite good. What makes her good? She's just a bit dirty, really. Quite fun in bed. But she's quite annoying, so I think. She's quite annoying? Yeah. The propensity for men to put up with annoyingness for good sex is what most marriages are based on. <laughs> Charlie Brown. I say, how the fucking laugh, and I ain't Charlie Brown. That's not a real name. <laughs> 60 year old cabbie Charlie Brown has been brought into King's by his daughter in law Zena and his sister Pat. Can I have a receptionist to recess to book in a new patient, please? Thank you. This is his second visit to AE after crashing his cab earlier in the week. He's been feeling confused ever since. Tell me what happened again, sir. I was involved in a car accident. Thank you. Okay. And I'm a Nicole. black cab driver. Right. So what happened exactly? What actually happened was Saturday evening, it was raining mm -hmm. quite hard. Tuesday night, Tuesday night, it was raining mm -hmm. quite hard. Yeah. What I've been told 
since the accident and not the evening that it happened when the fire brigade come was my cab went into a, what, a crash barrier on the side of the road, mm -hmm. got jolted forward yeah. and the ambulance crew told me what I actually had done was what you what you classify as I had balls eyed my head mm -hmm. on the window screen. Yep. Charlie Brown had been a taxi driver for many, many years and was very experienced in driving. No one quite sort of worked out why he crashed his taxi. Did it take you to the hospital that time? Yeah, straight, straight here. In here? Straight. Oh, okay. Well, uh, doctor won't be long. Oh, well, right. no problem, no problem. Normally when someone has a trauma, crashes a car, they got aches and pains, but they, they're, they're, they're back to the usual selves. But Mr Brown went home and was confused. <laughs> We didn't know what was wrong with him, we just knew that he wasn't Charlie as we knew Charlie before his accident. We didn't know what was going on in his head or what was going on in his body. We just... don't know. Sally is still waiting with her ex-boyfriend, Ben. Oh, I've got a, I've got a mint. Uh, no. He's from Thailand. I need a wee. <laughs> I can't help you with that. Oh, no, no, but God. you might have to. Oh, God. Do, oh, do I really need to? Can you do No, I just want you to see my front bottom ball last time. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you having a wee. I used to go out with Ben when we were at college together. He was a shy teenager. Back then, he was really grateful to meet someone friendly and outgoing, and very over-generously, he credits me with um, his awakening. <laughs> oh, I really need to go to the toilet. Do you generally need some help? Oh, I really am not going to ask you to help me go to the toilet. I'll just have to do it all one-handed. Can you...? It's um, just because I've got tights on, it's just a bit of a fat. Yeah. Um. I guess she was the dominant one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was, definitely. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it. I certainly wasn't her first boyfriend, so... Um, <laughs> she'd had a, a, a more varied and, and fun youth than, I, than I'd had. He did admit that he wasn't exactly worldly wise when he met you. My goodness me, <clears throat> no, Ben was very naive when I met him. Um, yeah, I think he was very pleased to meet me. Oh, I'm feeling a bit sick. Well, after that chocolate, is there anything I can get you that would make you feel better? Like food-wise or drink-wise or a little hug? I just feel a bit nervous in my tummy. Yeah. Like butterflies. Awesome. Like the sort of butterflies that make you want to do a poo. Really? Here, go and leave her. Look, you've run out. <laughs> Sorry, just leave my child in the middle of recess. Hiya. You are? Daughter-in-law. OK. So I didn't get your name. Zena. Zena, very nice to meet you. My name is Tian, well, they need doctors. Good morning, Olga. Um, I know a little about you. I know that you were in car accident. What's happened since then? My coordination has been... It seems to be going funny. He's got no, no. coordination whatsoever. Like, trying to... Eat, he does smoke. So trying to get a cigarette out of the packet, he could I was having do. problems. He can't get himself dressed. He can, but the clothes are around the wrong way. Yeah, well, He tries to read the was... paper upside down. Uh -huh. Charlie doesn't really talk a lot, mm. but now we can't show him up. <laughs> but the things that he talks about... Mm. ..aren't right. Um, they are right in what I think. They're right in what he thinks, but the things that he's going on about, like, he thought my dog was a horse. Oh, no, no, that's, that's, that's a joke, though, that is, isn't it? 
Even today, I took him for a walk around our little block, me, him and the baby, and... I tried to go in the wrong street door yeah. instead of my own. I was trying to do go you, in the Do you guys live door. together? No, I live no, opposite. opposite. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So you kept the first Yeah. yeah. How's your vision been since you've been at home? Tell the truth. And have you been able to read things clearly, watch TV clearly, see things clearly? Well, um, not as it's, not 100% I wouldn't say, no. Okay, okay. Would, okay I'm not going to get you to uh, take your finger. Yeah. And point to your nose. Yep. Then point to my finger. T touch it. And then to your nose, and back again. And again, I'm just going to take that. the right side. All right, mate. Keep on doing that. To my finger, sir. OK, keep on doing that. Okay. Look at me, sir. Yes, ma'am. Tell me which finger I'm moving, OK? Right. Right. I can remember thinking this is, this is quite interesting, but I quickly worked out that it was something neurological, meaning something may be wrong with his brain. And the things that you wor we worry about um, after trauma is if there's been a tear in the lining around the brain, which causes bleeding. I'll have a look at the blood results, see yeah. what we've done. I'll come back up and chat with you. Is that OK? Yeah, thanks. Sit back then, mate. Right here. Mm -hmm. All right, mate? Yeah. Just going to make sure the baby's all right. Yeah, of course. But he's left side, he can't see out this eye. No. When he stood there and done this to him, he's saying that the right side, he's got, like his right side is going, but there's nothing on the left and he was moving that. I've got a feeling he's got brain damage in his left side. Cabin fraternity. What's that? I've done the knowledge of London. Okay. Yeah. Become a black cab driver. You but in my. I'll do your job next. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't mind that at all, young lady. <laughs> Especially if, if you've got a young family. Becoming a black cab driver is a, an absolutely brilliant job for a person like you. As long as I can have a sat nav with me. <laughs> Once you've done the knowledge, young lady, they say all cab drivers. I've got a sat number up there. But... Like a donkey, they never forget. <laughs> I forget everything. No, you won't, young I'll lady. Believe you me. <laughs> but I must admit, all those I'm saying that to you now, young lady. How, how job recently has made, been made a lot harder in in IE in the fact of trying to make a living because there is more and more private firms and they are taking our work away from us. And they don't... They, and the only way that they know to get out to get from A to B is by using a sat -nib. They haven't got the knowledge what the London driver's got. If a patient is aware of what is going on, uh, it causes huge emotional impact. Yes, it is uh, terrifying. It is, it is uh, like heart attack. It's a brain attack. Derek is waiting for the results of his wife Peggy's brain scan. Despite Peggy's symptoms, her scan is inconclusive. There's no sign of dark patches which would suggest bleeding on her brain. 
So we took her off the CT of her head. There's no obvious blood or anything on the CT, which I was suspecting in the first instance. I can't see any areas of obvious infarct on there. But the fact is she's still within a sort of three-hour period at the moment. What have, you, have you guys felt anything should be should be uh, done? No, no, no. You, no. If, if it is clear cut three seizures and uh, CT doesn't show anything major. Tim? Yeah. Um, just have a chat with straight guys. They, they don't want to do anything, so I think we should wake her up okay, yeah, let's see and see how we go. Um, I'm going to have a quick chat with her husband as well and explain to him what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go for we'll it. Go for yeah. There. Yeah. Mr. Piss. My, my name is Dr. Tunnycliffe. I'm one of the consultants here. Yeah. As you know, we popped a tube in her just to keep her sedated and sort of breathing out while we did a scan. Yeah. And the results of the scan are quite pleasing. Mm -hmm. okay. There's no obvious major bleeding there, mm -hmm. which we were concerned about. Mm -hmm. And there's no obvious treatable stroke yeah. there that, that we mm -hmm. can see. Sometimes we can treat strokes by giving oh, a yeah. medication. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing there that obviously needs treating at the moment. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean to say she's not had a stroke. Mm. She may still have had a stroke. Yes. OK. But what we're now going to do, we're now going to wake her up, OK, get her nice and awake again, and then we can reassess her again with her nice and awake and, and mm. see what we need to do. You're going to need to use pain at the moment. Peggy? You know she needs us to know if it comes Peggy? Yeah, you right. Open your eyes for us. Peggy. Peggy. Peggy, can you squeeze my fingers for me? Squeeze them. Squeeze them tightly. What we're going to do is take this tube out of your mouth. We're going to replace it with an oxygen mask. Your husband's outside. Peggy, can you squeeze my fingers for me? Squeeze them. Squeeze them tightly. She's woken up. Oh, wow. She's going to pop an oxygen mask on your face, Peggy. I need to move this man back on the bed. He's really quite heavy. Well, just lay down for us for two seconds. Right. Ready? Steady. Right, sit yourself up, Patrick. That would be okay. cannula. Try and move yourself back. That's it. You're doing really well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You are. That's it. Just move back a little bit. After four hours in recess, Peggy's stable but still hasn't come round. She's had a bit of trouble with uh, this before, but Peggy's always been cured, shall we say, and, and come out for another a year of being fit again. Yeah, it's always hard, but of course you never know what's going to happen. You're in, in the lap of the gods to know what's going to happen next. Yeah. I thought you was longer than that, Dan. 
Charlie Brown's also had a brain scan to find out the source of his confusion. That was quick. Yeah. Did they say anything when they'd done it? The, the doctor's going to come back and Is this his explain all the re yeah. reports to me. Hello there, my name is Tian, N-E-S-H-O, uh, in Kings. Um, can, I just, can I discuss a patient with you, please? It's uh, Charlie Brown, a 60-year-old gentleman who's a cab driver traveling 20, 30 miles an hour. Um, hits a railing, uh, bullseye to the windscreen. Um, on head CT, he's got a bleed um, on his right. Uh, looks like uh, subdural. Do you want the hospital number to have a look at the CT? You've got a key, sir. Yeah, thank you very much for... Seeing him, okay, thank you. Finally, that's massive, huh? Huh? He's walking around like that? Yeah, he, he doesn't know yet. Pretty impressive, huh? Yeah. I mean, that he hasn't shown stronger symptoms than. Yeah, he's got very strong symptoms. Yeah, but he's walking. That's not well. At least you know. Yeah. Does the family know yet? No, family. Okay. Do you want to just tell them because they've been kind of looking at the scans over your shoulder? I could see from where we was, the left side was just black, and that's when you just know that there's a problem. It should all be grey, not black and grey. Um, we had a look at your scam, yeah. and you've got an area that, that's slightly abnormal on the on the right hand side, right, um, in your brain. We're not quite sure what what it is at the moment. Right. Um, we need one of the radiologists to have a have a look at it. Right. Sure. But initially, it, may, it looks like this that you've got um, some loss of brain there, um, the cause of which is slightly un uncertain at the moment. But I just thought I'd come and tell you what's what's happened so far. Okay. But what sort of things put problems like that back together again? In other words, how can you fix how it? How can you fix it? We can't, depending on the problem is we're not quite sure where it is no, at the moment. Once we know, yeah. um, we'll, we'll discuss oh, with the relevant doctors regarding how we can help you. Yeah, so we'll sorry about the lack of That's not a problem. clarity at the moment, but we'll try and sort things out and come and talk to you as soon as we know. Lovely. Okay? Yeah. I'll be right. around. You right, Charlie? Yeah, I'm fine. Pat, will you just watch over for me? Yeah. Hello? Zena phones Charlie's wife, Patsy, to update her. Right, his brain scan's back. Um, on his right side of his brain, there's something severely abnormal. They don't know... The way that the doctor's just described it to us is that there's a part of it missing. Yeah. This was the first time Charlie had ever been ill. He'd, nothing had ever happened to Charlie other than an ulcer. And Charlie always said he was invincible. Nothing was ever going to happen to Charlie. I just want you to focus on you for now, right? I know it's hard, but please just focus on you. All right, I don't need you fucking going down and all. I've got this cancer, keratosis and Bowen's disease. Charlie's accident was on the 26th. On the 25th, I got told this is terminal. You just stay there and I'll ring you as soon as I know anything. Zena was with me on that Monday when I got that news and it was a lot for that kid to take on. And I think Zena absorbed it more than I did. But love ya. Bye. One minute, everything's fine. Family's all running smoothly. And then bang. You get told that 
the most precious people in a family, there's something wrong with a pair of them. Hold everything's all right. Yeah. Why are these poor little hookers? No, no, do you know what, yeah? Because I'm a guy, I don't know shit about football. I fucking hate football. I hate the amount of money they're making. I hate football, cuz. But obviously, yeah, you know, like when everyone's back in the days, going, yeah, I support Man U, Bear Tear Tear. And when I went to school, bare people wanted to support right. Arsenal because they were sponsored by Nike. I was just like, fuck that. I'm, I'm going to be versed. I'm going to just do whatever, do do the opposite of what everyone's doing. But they were supporting that you picked the rubbishest team. Fab, I was with Liverpool from day. We were Manchester United from day. Glory Hunter, fam. You me? Yeah. How can I be a glory hunter? That's the only team I've ever supported. Told man, Liverpool's the one. Liverpool's rubbish, bro. Where are they now? Third from the bottom. I don't know what bottoms, what bottoms, 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 fam. I just know because I support Liverpool. Though you can't tell me about what players play. All I know is Matt Manimum. That is it. He's been playing for Liverpool for years. Sally Cullen, please. Oh, that's me. Thanks. Is it right if my friend comes? Thanks. Thank you. How did you do it? I was getting a rubber stopper out of a kilner jar, and I was like, you know, you build up quite a amount of pressure trying to get something out, and then as it came out, it cut through my knuckle. Okay. And also, I've been fighting to bend it in case blood squirts out of it. Okay. Well, let's see it on this blue chair here. Have a look. Sorry. As long as you're moving a your finger. Yeah, that's a good sign, isn't it? And you can feel me touching yes, the end of your I finger. Yes, I can. Yeah, I can. And we're happy, really. Oh, right, good. That's reassuring. What happened to you and Ben in the end? What, why did it not last? I don't know. You'll have to ask him. He dumped me. <laughs> no. He, he, yeah, he did dump me, but rightly so, because we were very young and he wanted to just go off and experience a bit of the world. <clears throat> other women. Um, Dr. Magic with his magic <laughs> <Yeah>. liquid. <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't need to stitch me up, he's just going to give it a magic kiss better. <laughs> well, this has ruined my plans for becoming a hand model. <laughs> Got another one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Pleasure. Gorgeous. Gonna give it a shot. Mummy needs to make some phone calls. When I spoke to Patsy's sister, and that was when it hit home that it was real, that something was seriously wrong, and what was going to happen to us all. Right, he's had a CT scan. Um, his right side of the brain, um, he's got a part missing. And that's what the doctor's just told us. He's got a part. A, Bit of his right side of his brain missing. <laughs> Fuck no. <those. laughs> and I keep laughing in shock. <laughs> I don't oh, poor, poor Pat, she's laughing with me. Pat, what does what it was mean? What's that to Granddad? Pat, where's he's... it gone? <laughs> no, I don't know where he's lost it. <laughs> One of the passengers. I <laughs> don't know then. <laughs> and oh, we're waiting for brain then. surgeons to um, assess his thing. I just keep thinking what I do 
next? <laughs> hey, Ray sauce. I took him straight back through to Ray sauce. And that's when I want him. Fucking machines keep going off. It's horrible. <laughs> Just to see him laying there. And the way he keeps talking. Yes, well, I hurt. As you'll know, Doctor, they call it when a patient balls eyes and he's talking so posh and, and then one minute he's talking like that, the next minute he turns around to me and he goes, you're right, cock. <sighs> you know, I know this sounds really horrible, but I just keep thinking, how am I going to cope with her having treatment, him being like this, looking after a baby, I can't do it all when. <laughs> but I don't want to let him down. But I can't let him down for Keep this time for me. Come on. <laughs> oh, my leg. <laughs> I'm on me, cuz. Cuz, yeah, let me put you in this <laughs> trap. <laughs> I've got to use it, mate, because the brakes are on. Yep, yeah, thank you, boss. All right. Bro, let's go down there and see what go. Slow down, right, look. Yeah? You okay, yeah? Stop nice, nice. begging it, fam. Are oh, you still begging it like that? Blam. 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 I'm going to check with you, Shane. Hi, mate. Doctor, uh, Hi. No, not yet. Not yet, mate. <laughs> Two and a half hours after arriving in Resus, Charlie and his family are waiting for a diagnosis. You try to think that they're just going to come in and tell you that everything's all right and that they've made a mistake. You don't think that they're going to come in and tell you bad news. The CT hedge, as, as you probably have got up already, shows an area of right-sided um, low attenuation, which is not there on Tuesday. Um, I've got the Rosy red cheeks. She's been screaming. Oh, not them TVs again, is it? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> this little piggy go market. This little piggy stay at home. This little piggy run all the way home. Wee, wee, wee. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Bye. Can I come up a word with me? Yeah, right. Mr. Brown. Um, so we have discussed your results with right. various specialists. Right. And we think you've had a stroke on the right hand side. A what? A stroke. Yeah. Do you know what a stroke is? Yeah, his yeah. wife's had 15. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what fixes it? Um, actually, the damage has already occurred. Um, so we wouldn't, we wouldn't do anything acutely. So he's going to have to stay in. You're in the best be place. Right. It's pretty bit of a shock to you, sir. Do you have any questions at this moment? Is that going to stop me considering my career? Um, th symptoms will improve with time as your brain adjusts to what's happened. Fine. OK. Yeah. Sorry. Is that... You know when you've done this with your hands? Yeah. Is that why he didn't pick this one up? Yeah, that's why. You'll be all right. But when I say stroke, is it, is it as bad as it sounds it is? So, uh, strokes affect different people in different ways. It's a yeah. broad spectrum of things. Right. Uh, of a While he's answering questions, you're all right with him, yeah? As you say, some people are affected where they can't yes. be on Doctor's just been round. He's had a stroke. Yeah. Thanks very much. Okay. Thanks for all what you've done. OK. Thank you, sir. I wish you the best. Oh, nice to meet you. And you, sir.
I was relieved that I was alive. I couldn't face dying because I always think, if I'm not here, what are they going to do without me? Little old Charlie Brown. Charlie's wife, Patsy, comes to see him in recess. Whatever job Charlie's had, he's took to heart. He wants to take the well done. If something's not right, Charlie thinks he can fix it. And you can't get through to Charlie that you can't fix it. That's Charlie. Listen to me now, right? It's too dangerous for you to drive at the moment. Charlie, I know what I'm talking about, mate. You could get in that cab and it could happen to you again, and this time you won't come out of it. But you've got to do what I said. Look what's happened to me, Charlie. Do you think I like what's happened to me? But I've got to accept it. We've got to get our heads round it, mate. It don't matter how many knocks you get. We can all get over it because we're all together. So we're all as one. And what more can I say? Well, mate. What did I say to you? What floor? I don't know. Top floor, penthouse. Yeah, you get a penthouse suite, yeah, mate. No good penthouse this way. You get a telly, get a phone. Well, oh, don't tell him. Don't tell him that. He'll be on the phone in five minutes. Arseholes to you and all. <laughs> The only thing that harms me is me not being able to go to bloody work. Everybody's been saying to me, why don't I get a, a tea bar? And if I could put it on the rank where, where the drivers that I've been bought up with work, there couldn't be no better thing for me. And at the moment, it ain't hard to make a cup of tea. I can still do that and a cup of coffee. And I might even throw in a cake. <laughs> So... Yeah, it looks like you've actually got a little crack on the bone in your leg. Is it? Very small. It hasn't caused, hasn't caused any of the fragments to move. Yeah. So it will heal very well with no deformity. Yeah. So don't walk on it for now, because yeah. you need to put cast on and then you need to use crutches. Yeah. Put any right, thank you. This man's got a crack in my leg. <laughs> How about that? Oh, these itches. Sonny, mm -hmm. did you hear what my man said? What are you mm -hmm. Did you hear what my man said? It's all about a crack. Oh, a crack in my leg up here, cuz. Madness, I'm upset for that. I'm upset for that. It's my right leg, you know, so I, I, I play football in that. I've got a crack in my leg. Like, my leg feels a little bit pain, but it don't, it don't feel too... This one's hurting more than this one, bro. Side of the prab, at the side of the bed. Oh yeah, oh, I've left it. He's going away with the doctor. Oh, you've left the baby. That's <laughs> come out, left the baby in fucking recess. Oh, you pulled the baby out. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> a wonderful lady. She she brought up two wonderful daughters. 
She knew what she was doing. She had a habit of losing things now and again, but apart from that, she, to me anyway, she was perfection. You do miss her very much, but uh, I suppose that's the way life is. It um, happens to us all in the end. We've all got to go and that's inevitable, especially when we're getting on a bit now. Saturday night's all right for fighting. It's obviously Thursday night's all right for stabbing. Colin is in hospital and someone broke into the house and stabbed him. He's saying to me, basically, if I can clean in my ears, I can kill myself because I'm pushing the infection into my brain, yeah? So if I can just get you to pop your T-shirt off underneath there. Was he in here when you took it off? Yeah. When you took your T-shirt off? Yeah. I only end up hitting him. 